welcome back. This is <clears throat> part two of our Mountain Mist Hat Knit Along. My name is Megan Young. I am um, the owner of the Village Yarnery. This is my YouTube channel, Mego Makes. And this is um, our step-by-step -step videos to help you work through your Mountain Mist Hat pattern so that you have a beautiful hat and if you are choosing to participate in our Mountain Mist sweater knit along, you will have a wonderful gauge swatch ready for that. So I am finishing up the very last few stitches of my ribbing as per my pattern. And if you're tuning in and I look like I'm knitting really funny, I probably am to you. I knit using the Portuguese method. So I apologize if that's confusing for you. I will demonstrate in with the typical English or throwing style, but that's what I was doing. So I have finished my allotted amount of um, ribbing uh, per the instructions. I didn't knit so many inches. So now I am going to switch to my larger needles. I am currently using a size four, which I did in my ribbing because I'm using the DK weight yarn. Um, you can see more information about this if you uh, watch the previous video. And you can find that uh, by looking down in the description. But I am now going to switch my needles. So I'm going to switch to size six needles. This is my key. If you have interchangeable needles or if you are um, unfamiliar with interchangeable needles, this is how you change interchangeable needles out. Put the key on, off with the old needle. And I will actually stick these in my bag later because I do not need them anymore for this project and twist on my size six needle. I am just holding the key like that, securing it. There we go, there's needle one. There's my stitch marker that I slid back over there. And off with needle two. Now the reason why you don't wanna just hand tighten this is because that means that it can just come loose very easily. So I am going to twist this on and then really use that key to help make everything tight and there we go now if you are switching needle sizes and you go to slide your new needle back in to your work and it's too difficult because you just went up two needle sizes and i lost my stitch marker this slides okay i'm not worried about it but if it was too difficult for me to slide those stitches on there, all I would do, I'm trying to locate my lost stitch marker here, all I would do would be simply to, on this first row, go up my needle size with my right needle and continue knitting off of the smaller needle size with my left needle. So I am going to now begin to knit in the round um, per what my pattern says. <clears throat> Switch to larger needles and knit in the round so you will look at your pattern to see how many rounds you need to knit. I am making the adult large so I'm going to knit six rounds. So I will show you that. I will do my first couple of stitches here in the English style just to show you what the knit is. So there's knit one. And there's two and three and so on and so forth. So I'm going to switch um, to the Portuguese style and knit to the end of my left needle here and then I'm going to show you something called the traveling loop and that is a variation on the magic loop and it makes um, color work even easier when knitting in the round. So um, let me get there.
are currently knitting, let me take my yarn off my shoulder here. If you're currently knitting with the magic loop method, your work will look, let me adjust things here so it looks the same. Your work will look something like this. You've just finished knitting across your left hand needle so it's hanging out there. You have a wing over here and you have your wing and your cable over here. If you're going to continue to work in the magic loop method, you would turn your work, get your yarn out of the way, slide your front needle in, so that's your left needle, pull your right needle out, so now you have your wing over here and your wing over here, and you would begin to knit. You have your stitches roughly divided in half on your needle. Um, this is fine, however, because I am um, going to soon be beginning color work and because sometimes um, having to mess with both wings can get fidgety here, you got both wings, I have discovered something called the traveling loop or the modified magic loop. So So I want to share that with you now because it's a really fun little trick. If, now, I will say, this only works if your project is large enough. So this will work now for this hat. Um, this wouldn't work for, say, socks. Um, or when we get to the top of the hat for the decreases, it does not work up here so well. Um, your work has to be uh, long enough to accommodate the length of your needles. So if you're using short needles and a longer cable, then you can probably do this method. Um, but you can switch, I actually switched to the, the traveling loop method um, after I uh, knit my uh, first row of ribbing. So you can try this out. If you love it, great. If you don't, that's fine. If it feels too awkward or you can't do it, then your project might not be large enough to do it. Uh, it just has to be, it can't be something too small because your needles won't be able to curve around. So um, all you do is go ahead and instead of having the wing over here and the wing over here, you're going to pull that cable on through so that all of your stitches are right there. And then you have this cable here. Now my cable is really long because I'm using a really long cable. So if you're using um, like say a 36 or 32 inch, um, it is more than enough cable to get this job done. But mine is just really long because that's what I had available. Now I am going to take my um, needle and my cable. Everything is hanging here in a loop and I'm going to begin knitting. And I'm just going to continue to knit around until I get back to my stitch marker. And I will actually keep this on video, so I'll speed it up a little bit. I'm just doing the knit stitch. Um, but you guys will be able to see what is happening to this loop and why we call it the traveling loop. So I am going to knit again in the Portuguese style. So don't let this confuse you. I'm just doing the knit stitch.
just finished knitting that last stitch that was on this left needle and look, now the loop has traveled over here to this side of the work. So it started out right here with the right needle and now it's traveled over here. So I will show you what to do in the next step. Just before I proceed, you guys probably did notice that I stopped and put a stitch marker here on this stitch. So what I did before I knit this second round because there was my beginning of the round marker, I put a stitch marker on the first round so that I can know that this is row one, that is row two, and so on and so forth, and I'll be able to count how many rows I have just by looking at my work. I love to use stitch markers, and in fact, some people might say that I overuse stitch markers. I don't think that there's any such thing. Um, I have kids, and kids love to mess with things, and sometimes things um, can become all confused and whatever if kids mark on my paper or erase my marks or things like that they don't move my stitch markers, so that's what I do. So, the loop traveled from this over here, the right needle, now it's over here on the left needle. All I'm going to do is pull my right needle out of my work, and the loop is going to travel back through. There's a lot of cable in here, so I apologize for that, but now I'm back over to begin able to work off of the left needle, and I have all of the cable here on the right needle. Now, what I love about this method, well, there's a lot of things that I love about this method, but one of the things that I love about this method is I can be knitting along using this method and let's say that I need to put my project away or go do something. It doesn't matter where I am. I'm knitting in the round. I can technically stop at any time. Um, but when I stop, I'm not just going to leave my work, you know, sitting like this. I can just take and pull this right needle on through and pull it out, and now I'm ready to continue again. So if I was going to travel, I'd pull my needles both out. I'd put my stitch markers, or my not my stitch markers, my point protectors on them, and there we would go. So I am going to continue to follow the instructions, which is simply... Um, continuing to knit in the round until um, I am ready to begin the color work. So this is all for video two. It's just going to continue to be knitting in the round. We've finished our ribbing. We've now switched to the larger needles to do the body of our hat. Um, the next video we will continue on and we'll do the color work. So we, I will again um, change needle sizes and I'll discuss that in the next video. I will go up one more needle size for the color work and we'll begin that. So have fun guys. Keep going and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.